So why are logarithms so scary in textbooks? Well, my answer is because they look scary. Look at this definition that you typically see in a textbook. If b is a positive number different from 1, then we say log base b of x equals a if b to the a equals x. My brain hurts. My brain hurts. Um, that's very technical. That's very dry. But once I get over my emotional reaction to it, I actually see it does make sense. In fact, it's exactly what I've been saying all along. We were talking about, when you see the word log, write power instead. So I'm saying power b x equals a. That's what we're talking about in this definition. Okay, the power of b that gives the answer x is a. a is the power of b that gives the answer x. a is the power of b that gives the answer x. Oh, that's what the textbook definition is saying. Great. So actually, it makes much more sense if we just cross out the word log, write the word power instead, and just use our common sense to figure out what that means. And then that's actually the textbook definition. But at first, it just seems dry and cold and sterile and hard. So let's talk about powers first, and then this makes sense. Actually, there's all this first stuff. What's going on here? B is a positive number different from 1. Now, if you saw my previous video, we were playing with different values of B for the bottom here, and saw some funky things can happen. Um, for example, I can write this power of uh, 7, 49, equals 2. The power of 7 that gives the answer 49 is 2. That's fine. Then positive numbers seem okay. Can I have negative numbers? Well, sometimes I can. Power of negative 2 that gives the answer 4. What power of negative 2 gives the answer 4? The answer is 2. That's fine. So you can have negative numbers for the bottom. Well, not always. Power of negative 2 that gives the answer 8? Can you think of one? No, that's hard. That's questionable. I don't know. So, textbook authors say, no, no, let's not get into the worries about when negative numbers work or don't work. Let's just stay in the world of positives to make it easier. So that's not a strict word, word uh, definition of a logarithm. Let's just make it easier for people to think about. Okay, so we'll stay with positives. Different from 1. What power of 1 gives the answer 5? There are none. No, no powers. In fact, any power of 1 is going to be 1. We'll never get to 5. So 1 is a problematic number. So that makes sense. Let's, let's keep it different from 1, because otherwise we can't get beyond 1s. All right, that's that first part. Keep it positive just to avoid some troubles, and be different from 1, because 1 is apparently annoying here. Great. And change the word log to power, and then everything actually makes sense. The power of b that gives the answer x is a. Therefore, a is the power of b that gives the answer x. Great. There's the textbook definition takes a bit of work to make sense of that. That's like the end result of writing down this thinking process. So let's make sure we understand powers first. And then we can write down things like that. Great. Then there's all these log rules. There's about 6, 7, 12 of these things. So let me go through the various log rules that make perfectly good sense if you just like can stand back a little bit and ask what's really going on in terms of powers. So let's go through them right now. I just need to clear the board. OK, so let's go some basic, through some basic log rules that you often see in textbooks. Uh, let's go from the very basic ones. Log base b of b is 1. All right, there's a property of logarithms. Um, it actually makes perfectly good sense. Remember, change the word log to power. I'm asking, what's the power of b that gives the answer b? Well, what power of b gives me b? 1. b to the 1 gives b. Makes sense. Uh, log rule number 2. Log base b of 1 is 0. What power of b gives the answer 1? Uh, b to the 0 equals 1. Bingo. Log rule there. Here's another log rule. 3. Log base b of b to the x equals x. All right. Again, this is just tautological. There's actually sort of really no, no logic here other than just it's so tight that it's hard to think your way through it. What power of b gives the answer b to the x? What power of b gives the answer b to the x? Well, x. b to the x gives the answer b to the x. That's it. Okay, this one's confusing. Because it's just so, so simple that it's actually hard. Log b to the log base b of x apparently is x. So you see this rule in textbooks all the time. What's going on? In fact, you might even see people cross things out. Ooh. Think it through. Think it through. What is this beast? Log base b of x. So log base b of x equals the power of b, I'll just write it out, that gives the answer x. Okay, atrocious handwriting, but you know what I'm saying. This thing, log base b of x, is the power of b that gives the answer x. 
So, if I actually use it as a power of b, what answer should it give? It should give the answer x. Use the power of b that gives the answer x as a power of b, and you'll get the answer x. <laughs> I know. It's like saying, um, who is Sally's daughter's mother? Well, it's back to being Sally again. So I'm like, you know, feeding information back in on itself becomes so sort of tight, it's hard to think your way through, but there it is. If I use the power of b that gives the answer x actually as a power of b, then I'll get the answer x. All right, so there are four very sort of what's called the, the, the easy trivial log rules, where you have to think hard about them. Then they come to the sort of the more meaty ones, so let's go through those next. Have to clean the board. Okay, here's our first seriously meaty log rule. Log base b of m times n is log base b of m plus log base b of n. This is Napier's dream. This is what Napier back in the early 1600s was trying to do, turn multiplication problems, m times n, into an addition problem. Look at some value plus some value. Great. So, why is Napier's dream true? Now, you can kind of see if you play with like simple numbers. For example, I would just say log base 2, the powers of 2 that give the answer, say, 8 times 16. Well, you know, I can think of this. This is what? 2 to the cubed, and that's 2 to the fourth. So if I multiply them together, I've got 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to need 7 twos to get to this. So the power of 2 that gives me 8 times 16 would be 7 twos. The 3 I need there, plus the 4 I need there, which is indeed log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 16. So I, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. it has to be true, at least for nice numbers. I don't quite have the reasoning in my head, but something's going on there. All right. I want to give the full proof of this right now. Why would the logarithm of m times n have to equal the sum of the logarithms? All right, so I'm going to think through the logic here. This left side, it's claiming the power of b that gives the answer m times n is this thing. That is, if I use this thing as a power of b, I should get the answer m times n. That's the claim. Let's try it out. Let's use this thing as the power of b. Log base b m plus log base b of n. If I use it as a power of b, it's claiming I should eventually get this, m times n. That's what I need to check. Do we? All right, here goes. So I don't know that's true yet, so I'll just like put that on the side for the moment. What is this? I'm assuming I do know my, log, my exponent rules, that the uh, uh, sum of exponents is, means I can just multiply the individual terms. Log base b of m times, let's get rid of that, b times log base b of n. Whoops. All right, so the product of these two exponents must be the sum of the exponents. That's fine. Oh, oh, this is like Sally and her daughter. Uh, using the power of b that gives the answer m as a power of b gives the answer m. Using the power of b that has the answer n as a power of b gives the answer n. So actually, this does equal m times n. This thing on the right is indeed the power of b that gives the answer m times n. Bingo. That's how you prove that log rule. It logically makes sense. You can kind of see it with nice numbers, but actually you can see it going through directly. I bet you could next then prove the next standard rule is that's kind of like the backwards version of this. That which undoes multiplication is division. That I claim that the log of m divided by n is given by the thing that undoes addition, which is subtraction. I bet you could use the same, same technique here to prove this standard log rule. All right, this is going well. Let's do a couple more log rules. This is fun. Okay, a seventh log rule. The log base b of m to the x is x times log base b of m. All right, I just said that fast. What I would just say. Actually, this, this, is a good, this is a good log rule. This is actually the one that's used most often today in the 21st century, especially in calculus. Whenever you've got a variable stuck upstairs, it's very hard to work with equations of variables upstairs. This says, hit that equation with a log, Bingo, hit it with the log, and that variable comes shaking down. Boom! Oh, there it is. Out front, down le lower level, we can actually handle it. So variables stuck upstairs in equations, hit the equation with the log, and the variables become out front, we can handle them. So logs are actually very handy for dealing with exponential equations, exponential functions, because it makes them manageable in terms of algebra. All right, bingo. Can we do it? So um, let's play with this logic here. This is, what is this saying? Log, power. The power of b that gives this answer is apparently this. So let's try using this as a power of b and check that it gives the answer that's claimed. All right, let's use this as a power of b. b to the x log base b oops, m. All right. Now, I'm assuming we're familiar with the rules of exponents. 
I actually think of this as an exponent of exponent. I can think of this b log base b of m all to the x power. Then I'm back to Sally again. Sally's daughter's mother is uh, Sally. That is, the power of b that gives the answer m uses the power of b gives the answer m to the x power still. Uh, this is m to the x. Bingo. Indeed, this thing here is the right power of b to the, give the answer m to the x. Bingo. This is the right power of b that gives the answer m to the x is indeed this object. We got it. Got it. That's it. I mean, they're the basic log rules. If you want, you can do very crazy, crazy log rules. For example, I might want to prove something like, I don't know, log base b of 1 of b of x equals negative log base b of x. I don't know why you'd ever need to use that, but, you know, it's actually it's kind of fun to play with these rules. Can you figure out how to use this as a power of 1 over b and check it really does give the answer x? It's just the same logic over and over again. In fact, all those log rules are basically the same logic. Just try it out as a power of b and see if it actually works. And you know what? If it's an actual dicky die rule, it does work. You can actually figure these things out for yourself. Kind of cool, actually, in the end. All right, but this is the real reason that we like logs, basically, today. Um, you know, in mathematics, we're doing calculations and working with algebra and equations. Variables stuck upstairs can be brought down to somewhere manageable by hitting an equation with a log. Very helpful. Very handy, indeed. Of course, there's more to them than that, too, but that, that's, that's the real high school reason for now in calculus. Great stuff. All right, more and on.